So I'm going to now to uh, talk a little bit about the passive droplet generation. And uh, what we'll go through is there's uh, two kind of primary uh, ways uh, of, of generating uh, droplets passively. Uh, and then we'll look at it, those, these two, and uh, they're called polydispersed versus monodispersed ways to, to create droplets. And then finally, just shortly, we, we kind of will go through alternative ways to make droplets that you might not commonly think about. Okay, so let's dive, dive right into it. So the two kind of uh, main ways to, to form droplets passively is either by vortexing or kind of inverting a tube. It's sort of, you could say, the, the old school style. Um, you don't need really any equipment uh, for that. Uh, maybe just a vortexer. Um, so if you have, let's say, oil and you have your sample some in your, in your tube, and you just go and you use the vortexer to, to make your sample. But the other way, a little bit more complex way, uh, is that you use some kind of microfluidic chip. So here we have a PMS chip. This is actually what we kind of use in our lab. And we also have it coupled to these two syringes. And these two syringes, they are the external pressure source that can be used. So there could be also different, different ones, but right now uh, what we see here, uh, we use syringes. And through this, we can also control the flow rate um, of the oil and then the sample. So the sample is, comes in one way, it goes, uh, here and the oil comes then inside here and it goes from two sides where they then meet at this um, co-flow uh, uh, region and then you can collect whatever droplets are made outside. So let's look a little bit on uh, how does this vortexing on inverting tubes look like. So we have the oil and we have the sample. And then we take our sample. And we vortex. So you can do this for a couple of seconds, you choose. And then you get these nice droplets up here and you have some oil here. So nice and sim simple. Uh, if we look now zoomed in on uh, our droplet uh, making region with the chip, we can also see we have some sample that has a different dye and then the oil comes from above and below and droplets are made. Now this is slowed down. Usually you don't really even see the droplets almost because uh, it's so fast. But for visual purposes, this is uh, kind of slowed down. Okay, so let's move on. So what kind of is the outcome of these two, two different methods? Well, you have two different actually than uh, droplets. And the first one then is what we called polydispersed droplets. And this means that they are not uniform in size. So you have some that are big and some very small ones. While with the microfluidic chip, uh, you see that you have these nice, what we called monodispersed droplets, meaning they are basically the same size. You might have a tiny bit of difference, but no, mainly it's they are all uniform. So overall, with these two methods, you have both 
some pros and some cons. So that means you can choose what is important for you and your experiment. Well, if you look at the first uh, modern dispersed droplets that you make with the chip, well, you have a nice volume control of droplets. And this means that it enables you to, to make also uniform droplets. And it also makes uh, the analysis part later on of your droplets uh, much easier and much faster. But there is the con that you do need special equipment. You do need, say, some kind of some kind of chip, some kind of uh, external pressure. Let's say syringes or different kind of pumps to kind of um, make these droplets. And also, you need someone who knows how to do this. So some kind of training uh, of personnel. Now with the poly dispersed droplets, um, the very nice thing is that you don't really need any equipment. Um, you can vortex, but you can even take your tube and you can even invert. So basically no equipment at all and no special training uh, needed either. Uh, the downside is then you don't really control your volume um, because they are uh, different sizes um, and yeah they're non non-uniform and this also later on makes the analysis of your droplets uh, more difficult and also more time consuming so there's all these things to consider when when you choose so our final topic now is uh, that we look at alternative ways to also make droplets. So this is a nice study uh, by, uh, by Kao in, in uh, 2019, uh, who made a, uh, what is called a gravity uh, driven uh, chip. So this is actually what it implies in its name, that you make droplets uh, in a chip, but you use gravity to do it. So, if you look at the kind of the schematics here, you have your, you put your oil in here. So you have some kind of can, syringe or something tube and you fill this oil inlet, kind of oil reservoir. And then you have here down here in this box, you, this is where you put your sample. So you have sample one, two, uh, three and four are in each uh, this region and what you do then is actually so you have it face down when you place it upwards the oil will as driven by gravity automatically come here and drive all your sample towards the droplet making region and then you get nice droplets in, in here. A very nice video if you follow the QR, uh, QR code is, uh, is available by the author and you can see it uh, more nicely there. Um, and this method we also replicated in, in our lab. So you can see it. Uh, this is after droplet generation and these kind of tubes these are uh, to kind of shut, uh, make sure the droplets don't come out. So this is just very basic kind of way to, to close the chip uh, really quickly. But then if you, after generation, let's see, we look at a little bit closer in one of these uh, uh, kind of places. Um, you see actually that the droplets are quite uniform. I mean, there is different, a little bit different sizes, but you have actually formed nice droplets just by using gravity. So there are interesting ways uh, to make droplets. And another one then um, used in, in diagnostics actually is then a portable kind of diagnostic tool. And it's what in short is called uh, PEMD, 
So push button activated microfluidic uh, dopenser is called. I won't go into detail how it all functions. Um, you can look at uh, the very nice study if you want to later on. But basically it's a, it's a portable kind of chip with different kinds of layers where you put in, in your sample in here, you push just a button and you get, by pressure, you get nice droplets that are formed and you can put it then, say, wherever you want to put it further on. If it's some kind of diagnostics, then for example here in a well plate. So these were just kind of to give you some examples. And now what we did, we actually go through, well, first off, we just looked at two primary kind of passive ways to generate the uh, uh, droplets. Then we looked at uh, the poly versus monodispersed droplets. How do they look and the advantages and disadvantages of both things. And then finally, we looked at some alternative ways to make droplets with gravity or this portable device that you just push. Okay, that is all. Thank you for listening.